Well, I got the Volvo back. Was excited about it. Drives great, steers fine, no more power steering leaks. Just decided to develop a little bit of a coolant leak. And it's been in the 30s in the morning. The uh, heat went out on the driver's side. Passenger side was working fine. That blend door is working on the temp motor, but the center switch is not working on or triggering any of the blend door motors. So when we get back up there, the uh, blend doors are all, the electronic ones are all out and we are strictly manual turning on the flappers because I don't want to spend any money and it needs a good amount and a full dash removal to fix. This is the winter beater. All I needed to do is defrost the window and stay semi-warm in the cold. So right now we're in full manual mode with a fully ripped apart dash. And as if that wasn't enough, that's what I've been working on all day yesterday. I didn't film any of it because I was diagging and it was a giant pain, but I'll show you what that looks like up there. But then we get underneath and I'm driving home from work today to make a turn and all of a sudden I had a race car. Exhaust split right above this mount. So this car being the winter beater, we're approaching 290,000 miles is giving me nothing but grief for neglecting it and letting it sit as long as it did. But all the new power steering lines are in, new steering rack is in, and go figure as soon as everything's kind of fixed and ready to go, something else has to break. So I'm cutting out these rusty sections and then we're just gonna patch this in real down and dirty because all of my exhaust tubing is at the other shop. The lift is here, I'm here, I have a welder and some really, really bad patch sections of exhaust that are not at all the right size, but we're just gonna burn them in because I don't really care. And this has to pass emissions. So we ran a, I tried getting that to pass this morning. Didn't work, put lacquer thinner in it. I did that two years ago. So if you go back in the videos, I did do that and it passed. So we're gonna try that again, hopefully with a complete not cracked exhaust and maybe that'll do it. I mean, the crack's after the cat, so that shouldn't really change it. But it's throwing a cat code. And all of the power steering fluid has lined the bottom of this too, it looks like. So rust preventative. Let's get this thing welded. That's what I was trying to cut off, that rusty bit, so I could re-weld on a way too big a flange. Here's the other side. I did not cut that. Started cutting on the pipe and it ripped right out of the stock muffler, so. Sweet, that's going away. I have no more money to spend after that trip to New Orleans. And I have clean metal pipe here that we're gonna flare up and run a cherry bomb. We're gonna put a glass pack on here. This will be fun. Straight pour engineering. But uh, we got a reducer that was pretty much the same size, so I had to burn that in pretty good around the outside of the flange. It's not pretty. I barely cleaned the paint off, just got it good enough because I'm running out of time. Gotta go get prepped for the trailer blasting day three and four tomorrow. So this is gonna get tucked up in here and it's probably gonna bang around on this heat shield and make a bunch of noise and drive me nuts. I'm also gonna pull this muffler down at some point now too, but I think there's enough meat on here where I can actually clean this up and then we'll do that again. It's just a straight shot of pipe. It shouldn't be that hard to fix at a later date, but I'm too old to be driving a car as loud as this thing was when I pulled in, so hang this thing up. I don't have my tripod or any of my stuff, so this was not in the cards for today. This is just a fix it to move on with the other crap that I have to get done. So here goes nothing. That's gonna vibrate and annoy the crap out of me, but I'll put a rubber thing in there or something, and then I just gotta figure out some sort of rear support. See if these studs are viable options. I know it's plastic nuts on the shield, but if I can just run a strap across here, I think we might just try that for a rear support hanger for a little bit and then uh, we'll drop this down and see what it sounds like. This is not the right way to fix your car. Do not do this. Back in the car. Moment of truth. Oh, there's the dash. That's all out. Blend door is dangling down there. The side's all apart. But we have permanent heat. Let's hear how loud this is or how much it vibrates. Oh God. I can't deal with that, that's way too loud. That was a giant waste of time and I should have just left the exhaust cracked because now it sounds like this. Leave it to the 
young kid to never have a bigger smile on his face. Oh, this is my life this week. Glass pack is on the Volvo. That's going to last probably another, well, this weekend. Dooley fired right up after sitting from going down to New Orleans in a week, but started right up. Diesel compressor also fired right up. Kind of. It's not a first crank fire light off work, but it took four or five cranks and I didn't kill the single battery that's in there. But I do have two backups in case. Uh, tomorrow morning is supposed to be 33 or 34 degrees outside temps. So I'm leaving this set up in here, pretty much ready to go for the blasting gig tomorrow with the giant trailer. So I'm hoping keeping this one inside tonight, I'm guessing it's probably gonna be about 45, 50 degrees in here. Still haven't turned on Nikor for the heater yet. I'm stalling, but that's coming very soon. So they just gotta come out here and do a quick visual inspection and then unlock the padlock. I don't wanna break any rules and cheat that, so. Do it the right way, and uh, yeah, the next couple days are gonna be trailer videos. So I know this is kind of an oddball one, throwing together a Volvo station wagon exhaust. It's still way too loud, but it's quieter than it was when it was cracked. That will last me this weekend, and then a couple of miserable days next week. It's, it's, it's still too loud for me.